Low-profile or pancake lenses are well-loved by amateur and seasoned photographers alike. They can easily take a bulky camera kit and make it much more friendly and inviting, which in turn can make the photographic process a much more enjoyable experience. And every camera system has its pancake lenses, but rangefinders in particular have always offered a wide selection of low-profile lenses. And stretching back to the screw mount days, rangefinder lovers have had access to slim lenses from Voigtlander, Avanon, Canon, Nikon, Ricoh, and even Leica themselves to complement their already small and compact rangefinder cameras. But up until about 2012, most of these low-profile options would be considered vintage glass by most photographers. And while most of these lenses would be considered extremely compact, even by rangefinder standards, they weren't exactly the lens cap replacements we see on the market today. A quick search of Leica and Pancake lens online will bring up quite a few offerings from new and old manufacturers, but in this video, I want to talk about the lens that I think pushed the envelope and brought about a new wave of ultra low-profile compact pancake style lenses for M-mount cameras that we see today. The MS Optical 28mm f4 per hour by Mr. Miyazaki. For those unfamiliar with Mr. Miyazaki's work, he's very well known for converting a variety of lenses to Leica M-mount. I've made a couple of videos about these conversions in the past, and you can check those out here, but Mr. Miyazaki also produces his own lenses that are often trailblazing and unique. Although we now have a variety of options when it comes to lens cap sized optics for our Leica M cameras, this 28mm per hour was one of the first modern versions of this kind of lens to hit the market back in 2012. The per hour might be as slim as a lens cap, but don't let that size fool you as this lens is extremely dense and premium for its size. In line with Mr. Miyazaki's other lenses, the build quality is premium while still maintaining some handcrafted charm. The design is quite simple, but elegant, with clear focus scale and aperture markings. In classic MS optical fashion, we get a metal, removable focus tab, but you'll definitely be keeping this on, as the low-profile design leaves no room to focus by any alternative means. Uniquely, the aperture on this lens sits in front of the optics, and f-stop selection is done more with a disc rather than the typical ring or dial. We also get a tiny threaded hood that doubles as a nice way to adjust the aperture. So how does something this small actually perform? Surprisingly, quite well at first glance. The Parar is a triplet design with three elements in three groups. I find the images it renders to be pleasingly sharp and modern, but with some vintage-esque character. The way a lens renders is a very subjective topic, but I think that many photographers would agree that a pleasing image is often one that blends modern and vintage character. It is a very fine line to walk though, and while the Parar can produce some pleasing images in some circumstances, I think it can also render very distracting images in others. I find this particularly true on digital, even like a digital, where the images can be hit or miss. On digital, vignetting and corner smearing can appear more pronounced, with out of focus areas also becoming a bit smeared and distracting. I love the punchy colors and contrast that this lens gives you, but zooming in just a little bit does reveal some of the compromises you have to make with a lens this small. Some of this can be chalked up to using wide angle rangefinder lenses on digital, but even on film, a lot of these flaws can be apparent, just to a lesser extent. To some people, this might be just a little bit extra seasoning to their photos that they enjoy. To others, it might be a compromise they are willing to make for a much lighter and smaller kit. And again, for others, they might find that the unique rendering and image quality is a deal breaker. For me, I found it a lot of fun to take this lens on a casual walk around the city. The punchy colors and unique character make it an interesting choice for both black and white and color street photography. For those that are interested in using this lens for street photography, I did want to note that with the focus scale being more on the face of the lens, you might have to take the camera away from your eye to set your focus distance for say hyperfocal distance and then go back to photographing. But then again, with it being a 28 mm f4 lens, most things are gonna be in focus and I tend to use this as a point and shoot style lens, so it should be okay. And I also found that it pairs quite well with other lenses made by Mr. Miyazaki. So you could put together a small kit like this for some kind of documentary or street photography project. The Parar's unique rendering is also something that I think could be well suited to mimic a point and shoot style photo on digital. With an on-camera flash and a film preset, I think the results can be pretty convincing. But with the unique look and slow aperture, it isn't really as versatile as I would like for a walk around or daily use lens, and I don't find myself using it as much as say the similarly character rich Minolta 28mm f2.8 rocker, which is still extremely small and light, but was much more mass produced, so there are plenty of them out there at a much cheaper price, and it's also, I think, a little bit more versatile. Everyone will have their preferences, and as they say, to each their own, and the M-mount is certainly not lacking in choices when it comes to small and compact lenses. 
If anything, the M mount and mirrorless lens market in 2022 is very diverse, if a bit oversaturated. It feels like every few months or so, there's a new ultra low profile or pancake lens hitting the market. Even Mr. Miyazaki himself has produced wider, slimmer, and faster lenses than this 28mm f4 per hour. So it's very easy to overlook this little lens that seemingly kicked it all off. No less so because it's completely overshadowed by another lens from Mr. Miyazaki that also seemingly sparked a new wave of lenses. If Mr. Miyazaki's 28mm f4 per hour sparked a renewed interest in these low profile lenses, his 50mm f1.1 Sonitar started a revolution. If it's true that we see a new low profile lens every few months, it definitely feels like every few weeks there's a new 50mm f1.1 or faster lens being released. Of course, there are other factors that affect the market, but I do think that Mr. Miyazaki's creations have a profound effect, and I did want to highlight one of his lesser known creations. In a landscape full of giant companies, a single person's innovations can still affect the course of camera history. Regardless of whether this lens is for you or not, I do think it's important to reflect on this kind of topic every so often, so I do thank you so much for watching. I'm David, and I'll be back with more videos soon. Thanks.